this episode of Purposely Curious, we take a deeper look into the death of Kurt Cobain, who died officially of a suicide. We listen to certain audios that implicate certain people in the Cobain saga. But is this all just conspiracies or is there way more to it? And should Netflix do a documentary on this? Dun dun dun. Get nice and cozy as we look into the Cobain mystery. Hello, Leonie. Greetings, Mary. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing well, doing well. What are you up to? How's everything going? And I know it's been, what, three weeks or so since we've recorded? Yeah, it's yeah. been a while, right? Yeah, I took a little bit, um, a few weeks off. Um, I went to Tahoe, had fun, you know, work's been a little hectic. And so it was nice to have, I guess, nothing to do outside of all that. Um, right. And just kind of do stuff. Right. Um, but uh, here we are. I'm back because my followers and subscribers are probably were some were messaging me where my next episode was so They're like where are you at <laughs> where are you at girl where are you at girl <laughs> well i can tell you where i was at um i actually have decided to take a little bit of a hiatus from drinking um last friday my girlfriend came over to my place and she, you know, I had had a beer and the right. next thing you know, we had another drink. And next thing you know, we we're having shots. Nice. And next thing you know, it's a few of us, not just me and her. So we're encouraging each other and we're drinking and we're... Wait, the party came I, over? The party came over. Oh, yeah. damn. Now, by no means is this a huge party, but it, it snowballed. And so... um Everyone who knows me knows that I can't do shots. Um, I either get super emotional, or get really angry. <laughs> Damn, you're like the Hulk. The, the Hulk, right? So, <laughs> but this is, I'm sure there's a drink that maybe you noticed growing up or in your party days that is just not something that sits with you. So obviously this drink for me is tequila and I figured this out in my twenties, right? So I, usually avoid it D not always but if i you know do have um some right. uh like let's say one shot because it's a wedding or something like that right i know to kind of steer clear from there on um but by the time the shot started like i think i was just feeling really good and we were just having so much fun um right. that i didn't even notice how many i took or you know it's just bad mm -hmm. um long story short um I, because it was my house, obviously, I don't remember when I fell asleep, um, but I woke up like at four or five in the morning. It's a really funny story, guys. And <laughs> well, I find it funny, but I woke up like at four or five in the morning, right? Went to the restroom, took my clothes off, you know, like went to bed and I just decided. Now, I don't remember going to sleep. Does that make sense? And I, when I woke up at four or five in the morning, I was still drunk, but right. I remember what I was doing. So I picked up my phone and apparently I sent a message to one of my ex-boyfriends and I was horrified that I sent a message and I sent him a message, another drunk message about, oh, please ignore it. I was super drunk. And in my drunk state, I did, I erased the message so that I don't have to deal with it or see it, right? <laughs> so drunk you sends a message, but still no, drunk you corrects the message and deletes I, it. So <laughs> let's just say blackout Mary, right? Blackout I was Mary. blacked out because I don't remember sending the initial message, right. sent the message. Then drunk Mary, hours later, read that message, right? And right. said, oh my God, I'm so sorry, ignore it. I was drunk and then deleted the message so that I didn't have to deal with it, right? Right, right. But of course, he still received it. Like, he didn't respond. So this is not anything crazy. What The reason I wanted to bring it up is because I laughed so hard. Anyways, Saturday, um, so I fell asleep. Saturday, all day I slept. So I didn't eat at all, Leonie. That's how bad it was. This Ooh. is the worst hangover I have had in my entire fucking life. No bueno. No. Like, you know, like when you get hungover and then you wake up, you have like a shitty morning, but yeah. I, I, the whole day, I've never had that before. Oh, damn. Yeah. 
So Sunday came around. I was supposed to record with my friend who was on the last episode um, about the port. And I had told him everything. And he was kind of laughing and making fun of me, right? Not fun of me, but he was like, he thought it was funny. He was like, well, we can do it another day. And I was like, no, come over. Let's just, let's just do it, right? Right. And so the first time I ate from Friday was on Sunday, like afternoon. Oh, wow. And so I was like, you know, because I had, you and I have had this discussion. I'm sure everyone's had this discussion of how like with COVID people were more casually drinking at home. Right. So I had noticed that prior to this, but you know, having the worst hangover of my life, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to take a hiatus from drinking. Right. Right. Um, and when about my rest of the week? Right. So I haven't had anything to drink. I haven't right. bought anything. I'm not missing it. Um, but I was telling my girlfriend yesterday, the story it kind of in more details, I'm, you know, I'm omitting a few things, you know, cause my, one of my girlfriends was crying that she may be in love with a friend. Like, I mean, it was just one of those nights, you know? <laughs> nice. I love it. So Full of drama. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, oh, and my neighbor knocked to, shut us up <laughs> like i mean it was chaos right so i was telling her the whole story with details and um i started laughing so hard and i that's when i i hadn't thought about the fact that i sent these messages to my ex um until yesterday friday right i had completely forgotten oh no <laughs> so i was laughing so hard and I was crying and my stomach hurt really bad because that's the, the best laugh of my life. You know what I mean? Right. And so she was like, why are you laughing? And I was like, because I feel so bad for him. Like, poor guy's probably like, my God, Mary is still in love with me. Like, <laughs> But that's assuming but, you're assuming that's what you sent, right? Or do you know what you well, sent? Well, that's, I don't remember. Okay, so I remember, remember I told you I, I, I blacked out. I sent him the first message. I can't remember what I sent him in the first message. That's because funny. I I woke up drunk right at right. six or five a.m. whatever right I remember being horrified that I sent that message and then ten, sent him a drunk message and that one I remember where I said ignore it you know I I was drunk or I don't know if I said I am drunk I right. don't know God knows what horror I sent him and. <laughs> I was laughing so hard and crying. My stomach hurts right now from laughing that's because funny. that's how so that's how sore my stomach is. But yeah, I just was laughing so hard because I'm like, I haven't thought about that message since literally like my drunken sent sending him a message to ignore it. Right. And I didn't remember until yesterday when I was telling the story. And I think it's hilarious because the poor guy probably was like, Oh my god, this girl is still in love with me or God knows what he was thinking, but <laughs> that's funny best story do i regret it fuck no i don't i would do that shit again because they gave me the best laugh of my life <laughs> that's funny see I, i've had so, those yeah. messages before like i've I received those messages from a couple of my friends who were drunk you know mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and one of them this girl was totally into me at the time but we never like dated you know and i think she's always been bitter that we never dated you know mm. so like i get these funny messages where it was never like i'm in love with you or anything like that there were always rude messages they're like, I hate your fucking jeans. So fuck off. <laughs> you know? Oh my and God. I'm I like, hope I didn't send that. <laughs> but that's why. <laughs> but then I'm like, I'm, I'm like, excuse me. You know, I'm like, cause it's two, you know, two thirty, three in the morning. Right. I'm like, what, what is mm -hmm. this? Man? Right. And then I realize, holy shit, she's drunk, you know? And the next day I call her, I go, Hey, what's up with my jeans? You know? And she's like, Oh my God. She's like, I was so drunk. I'm so sorry. Whatever. And I'm like, you didn't even say like, I miss you. Hey, how's it good? Nothing. You were just like, I hate your fucking jeans. <laughs> It's That's so why weird. I always ask people like, "What did you send?" Because I always feel like people send funny stuff that you don't remember, you know. Yeah, and I, that's the thing too. And because I deleted it, I remember in my drunken state, I'm gonna delete this message because I don't want to deal with That's it. That's funny. Well, drunken <laughs> you I and blacked out you is pretty quite responsible. But I can't remember what the fuck I wrote to the guy. <laughs> Seriously. So one of my girlfriends was like, "So just ask um, him." No, 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 no. I'm glad he didn't respond because hey, it's if better that, number that way. Is, is that number still in your phone book? Yeah, the right. No, to ask. I did it through Instagram. Oh, so you're not even friends on him? Or like you don't even follow, you don't follow him, or whatever, on Instagram? No, or? no, no, no. Oh, that's hilarious. So I looked him up. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the just thing. Hilarious. I looked him up. So my girlfriend was trying to get to the bottom of it. So she was like, "So what's the deal?" And I was like, 
you know, I'm not in love with the guy. Like, I, it's not even about that. Like, right. I don't, I don't, I mean, he's a, I still find him attractive. I'm, you know, I'm obviously always going to love him, but I'm not in love with him. Right, right. So I don't even know why I did that. So apparently drunk me loves him, you know. Yeah, nice. <laughs> So it's when I say loved him, I don't mean like in love with him. I just right, mean right. like you know, well, you guys part, know what you guys uh, you guys think past. of people. When, yeah, you guys yeah. think of certain people when you're drunk. Don't 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 act like y'all innocent out there. Right, right. <laughs> Everybody does. Oh my god! So it was so funny. So my stomach. If you hear me say, "My God, my stomach hurts," if we laugh, it's because I had one of the best laughs of my life. That's so do I have any regrets? No, I do not. Would I do it again? Hell yeah, I would. That's awesome. now I have a funny story to tell and one of the best laughs of my life. Well, that's <laughs> so cool. yeah, I will never know what I wrote to him. Oh man. <laughs> I, the <deleted> tragedy. It. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. want the good laugh now. So that's why I want to know. <laughs> yeah. So like, I'll look him up. I'll ask him, hey dude, what did she send to you, man? Just, just, just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, I want to fucking tell her that. Well, obviously, now that you're saying you sent an evil message, or you they sent you like yeah. a, your jeans are wack or whatever, yeah. like I'm horrified. I don't even. I don't. Do not tell me what I sent you. Like, <laughs> that's funny. It's kind of scary, but so I decided. You know, I used to drink every once in a while. Yeah. Um, like socially here and there. So I'm just going. You know, with COVID, I was drinking a little more, and then so let's use this as a time to just kind of give it a break right um so a few people were like oh my god is that is this like a forever thing i'm like no i just need a long break after this i give you i give you till next saturday you know why because you said it's you mentioned scary and i'm gonna say hey you know what this is halloween week yo this is halloween week not gonna do it now that you said that i'm definitely not gonna oh please I give you to Saturday, <laughs> Saturday. But speaking right? of though, it's Halloween week. So w- w- what's going on with Halloween? Are, are you, uh, you got any plans? You're dressing up? Actually, I don't have any plans mm. uh, or dressing up, although I am getting my hair dyed. Um, if any of you guys have seen my Instagram, my private Instagram, I dye my hair like a copper red. Um, nice. So it's, I literally have an appointment on the 31st. So it would be ideal, right? To dress up. Um no maybe i'll come up with something last minute nice how about yourself i'm going to a halloween party and a party Ooh. i mean small socially extremely socially distanced like group of friends just like six of us who mm-hmm. are um they're all, like doctor friends of mine so it's you know we're all super careful and stuff you know so yeah. it's just one of those things where this sucks this is the year where it's like falls on a saturday night uh yeah, time the perfect you day. know time goes back so you get an extra hour of partying <clears throat> drinking uh, merry you know so <laughs> and it's just like everybody's bummed because everybody's like well fuck everything's closed no bars are open no parties are happening no parties are supposed to be happening no trick-or-treating no you know so i think there's gonna be a lot of small group things going on with mm-hmm. people you know and i hope everybody mm-hmm. does it responsibly i know my, my friends are not the only reason why i'm going like we're only meeting outside in the backyard we're all still fucking wearing masks in fact a in fact, a mask is part of my costume. And, yeah, uh, well, it should, should be fun. But uh, I think about, you guys should it. have uh, get really drunk and get blackout like Mary. <laughs> no way, <laughs> no way. There's no way I want to go blackout Mary, dude. Fuck no. Oh Matt. my god, it's so funny. <laughs> you should do it for me. No way. <laughs> uh, then I'll be texting you. Hey, Sabis gay. <laughs> you look hot in your red hair. <laughs> oh my god. Except O-M-G. I'm not going to delete it. I'm just going to call you tomorrow and be like, send you the screenshots. Hey, that's me. That's oh funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. To the, I, Lord knows what I sent. But <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> we actually should do an episode of the dumbest things we've done when drunk. Oh, my God. I'm sure you have a lot of stories. No, being in. I don't have a lot of stories. But oh, I, come have, on. I mean, there are some funny stories, and some are probably too braided art. But I mean, I mean, I, yeah. we're uncensored. Right. <laughs> right <laughs> it's gonna be like you go i go you go i go <laughs> yeah let's do it and maybe we can right. have some of our listeners um send us some of their crazy stories yeah right yeah that'd be awesome <laughs> so i'm looking forward to uh i guess see what your outfit's gonna be send us a pic or send mm. me a pic yes yeah definitely or do you want to tell us i'm not gonna say but it, it involves okay. a mask. It involves the same mask that we're wearing, all of us are wearing, and should be shopping, whatever. So we'll see if I can pull it off. I'm sure you can. Yeah. Have a super busy week coming up. So um, mm-hmm. if, I can, if, I, 
if I don't drown in, in this busyness, then it should be good. Otherwise, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Busy is a good thing right before Halloween. Yeah. Um, and it's been a little bit hectic with the elections coming up. That's so right. there's a lot of tension. So you, you voted, people- right? I did. I you sent voted? it out yeah. two weeks ago. Nice. Yeah, voted, I think I, I even filmed it. Yeah. We both voted. And I hope all of you out there listening are, have voted or are going to vote. So that's super important. Doesn't matter who you vote for, you know, but just vote. That's super important. Yes. Yes. So as of yesterday, around this time at night, 56 million U.S. citizens had cast their vote. That's currently. crazy. Is that like a 56 record? 56 million. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 56 million. Yep. So it should be very interesting. Um, actually, I'm not even sure we'll get the results the same day if uh, it continues at this rate. Yeah, I wonder. You you know how they um they do those interesting uh, tabulations where they're you know where they know the numbers right, and mm-hmm. they're like, well, eighty percent of the votes are still not counted, but we do know that this person's still a winner, right? Mm-hmm. They they know that because they can subtract how many are still left to be counted and how many are needed, you know, and it all comes, it all works out these, these numbers, right? So mm-hmm. I'm wondering, cause there are some States out there that are not going to be counted till after the day. Right. Yeah. Cause they're saying that it's not that it's postmarked for some States. It's postmarked for some States it's received. So it's one of those, like, you're right. We may not know, but what if like the numbers overwhelmingly choose one or the other. Right. And then that is s- obvious. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's going to call it. Somebody's going to be like this fucker one, you know? Or this other yeah, one, I think, whatever. I think know. I think they might call it, but I think this will be a year where they contest it, where we may not officially. Yeah, that know. sucks. And that sucks. Yeah, that's why yeah. that sucks. Yeah, because so this is it, when shit goes wrong, you know. Yeah, well, let's let's hope for the best. Whoever you guys are voting for, and uh, hope for a smooth uh, counting of our votes. Yep. <laughs> Most definitely. Most definitely. So, um, let's, I guess after, you know, we had a lot of catching up to do since I was, haven't talked to Leone in a few weeks. <laughs> God, you miss me, don't you? <laughs> don't laugh, you're supposed to say yes. <laughs> oh, let's do it again. Say it again. God, you miss me, don't you? Yeah, I do. Fuck, you're laughing again. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Whatever. She misses me. I know she does. And I miss <laughs> Mary. Okay. I do miss Mary. I miss her all the time. So. But my ex doesn't. <laughs> Yeah, he's like block. He's not, he's not a part of this equation. He's not a part of this equation. He has his own podcast. Oh, how funny. Um, okay, so I wanted to do a follow-up um, episode on the death of Kurt Cobain. Right. Um, we did an episode where we kind of looked at the theories of why people believed that his suicide was not a suicide. And we kind of vaguely talked about several different theories. Right. Um. There was some things that you brought up that I did not know, um, which made me after we did our episode, I just, you know, started looking up um, stuff and um, I found a few things that I kind of wanted to discuss. Now, again, um, there's so much information out there. Um, Definitely, you know, is that on my end? Sorry. No. There's so much information out there that um, there's just so many plausible scenarios. Um, but I, as in the last episode, I did say I myself, based on what I was reading, hearing, seeing, I didn't think that it was possible for him to have committed suicide. Right. Um, obviously, we talked, you and I talked about the fact that I felt like the police department will never fess up to the failure of what that investigation was. Right. So I then found that the police department actually gave uh, the case, you know, the files and everything in 2014 to a detective that works in them, in the department. And he basically said it was a suicide. So I felt like I didn't know that that happened, but it was almost like, can you put an end to this type of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, But even then it, me reading his reasonings made no sense to me. If that makes sense. Like it hasn't changed my mind whatsoever. Right. Um, and then I was very, uh, we talked about the kind of like sketchy deaths around Courtney Love and one of her band members, which I did not know of until we were recording and you mentioned the death. Right. So I started to look into that as well. 
And sure enough, right, um, there are there is speculation as well that Courtney indirectly or directly had something to do with that. Um, and everything that you said in the last podcast about Kurt Cobain, um, about her being really close with Kurt, right, right um, was all part of it. Her name is Kristen. Am I pronouncing it's P F A F F? How would you pronounce that? I think Paf. it's Paf. Paf. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so she was also uh, dating the singer of, uh, not sorry, that singer. Was it the bassist? No, the guitarist of the band. The only male Eric. in the band home. Yeah. And in his memoir, he wrote that he, around that time, he was also hooking up with Courtney Love. Oh, damn. Yeah, so me looking into her death, right? So she died after he died. In, around the time where he died, she was already leaving the band. She couldn't get along with uh, Courtney. And so she was leaving. She had moved back to her hometown. And when she came back to pick up her stuff, he came to see her. And apparently she died of an overdose that, day, that night. Damn. And so in his memoir, he said that there are people who died insinuating that now we're just assuming, right? People who died because of his actions. So people think that that's in correlation to he gave her, you know, they were doing heroin together. and right. But she had been sober prior to that because she was trying to get out of that oh, life. But she man. had gone back to get her stuff and then died there. Oh, that's the and worst. Yes. So in the book, he basically says, you know, he was having also an affair with Courtney, but Courtney has never publicly acknowledged it and apparently was upset that he put that out there so theories are is that she was talking in his ear to get him to fuck with her yeah, but, um with um miss Kristen. Kristen yeah yeah um then as i looked more into it right uh basically they were saying that the parents and the brother didn't really want to say anything um publicly about Courtney, um, but that they have insinuated as well that they don't feel the, they feel like there's something fishy around her death, even though it was an overdose, you know, right? they're not questioning that it was, it was more the intentions because they had seen the way Courtney was to her and they had talked to her and why she wanted out. And she was very close to, you know, Kurt. Right. So I had none. Of, I didn't know about any of that until you um, told me. So I looked into it, and yeah, there's theories that she is behind his uh, her death. What do um, you think about that? Damn, that's crazy. It it just seems like it, you know whether or not she's behind it, but it, but it's just it's but it's so easy, right? Because it's like uh, somebody who's hooked on heroin needs heroin right mm -hmm. it's it, they need their fix it's like you know they can't go whatever it is a day or two or whatever it is without it you know they need it need it need it and it's so easy to get some for somebody right when you're mm -hmm. a millionaire rock star you know hollywood celebrity type you know and i'm thinking eh, what better way to get rid of somebody than to give them pure black tar heroin like mm -hmm. the, the type where it takes one fraction of what you would normally take to overdose you know Mm -hmm. And it just takes somebody to do, just do that, you know, that dosage, inject it, and then they're done because it's like you just poison them with the, you know, 100 times concentrated, you know, form of it or whatever. What easier way to get rid of somebody, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, was she trying to get rid of her out of, you know, jealousy maybe or something that, that she might have been hooking up with uh, Kurt or Eric or anybody, you know? Mm hmm Yeah. I think too the issue is is if it is true it's it sounds like no one could fuck with her. Right. Like she just didn't want anyone anyone to fuck with her. Right. Um so who knows but I had no idea until we were recording that that was also another one of her, you know potential deaths around her. Um which is sad. Um but going back to the Kurt Cobain, right? Mm -hmm. Um, in 
20, let's see. There was a note that the police department of Seattle, uh, released, um, that was a note he had in his wallet that they found, um, when she died. Have you heard of this? No. Yeah. So they released this, um, literally in 2014 and it was a small note in his wallet um and so essentially what it says is do you kurt cobain take courtney michelle love to be your lawful shredded wife shredded huh even when she's a bitch with zits uh siphoning and siphoning all of your money for doping and whoring oh damn right so this was found in his wallet. Yeah. And they actually released it April 29th, 2014. Now, isn't there something interesting about the release? I'm mean, no, sorry. The, um, the wallet, wasn't his ID placed by his body when he overdosed? I believe so. There was yes. something, there was something about that. I, I remember that the, the, because remember they're questioning whether, the, he could pull the, the trigger on the shotgun, right? And the bullet case, you know, fly out the wrong direction, right? And mm-hmm. then the questioning of how come he would overdose and yet neatly put everything away, all his syringes and shit like that, right? Mm-hmm. And then I think there's something about his ID being found near or his wallet, like his ID being open or out near his body. And I was thinking, why would, why would he do that? Like, that's that's weird, you know? So mm-hmm. I wonder if that note was always in there or if that was planted. The who knows? We'll never know. Hmm. We'll never know. But the police did actually release that. So if the police department wants to squash this, right? Like let's leave it in the past. Right. Why would they release a, I don't know. I find it very fishy. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is weird. But I had no idea that that was actually released, but it was in 2014. And I wonder, it's a tiny it, little note. Yeah, and I wonder, did he write that? Like, like, in the, like, did he write that in the sense that he fucking hated her and he wrote that and he put it as some kind of like passive aggressive move in his wallet to be like as a reminder that it's like, fuck her, I'm leaving her. Or was it given to him? Like somebody else write it and give it, gave it to him and he thought, hey, that shit's fucking funny. I'm going to keep it, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Because those are some know. harsh, harsh words, you know, especially to the girl you're dating or eventually the, your wife, right? Mm-hmm. Some mm-hmm. pretty harsh words. So, like, yes. Like, I wonder, was he keeping it? Maybe. Also, just, you know, trying to numb the pain with alcohol and, and you know, drugs. Mm-hmm. But that being in the back pocket memory reminder that my life sucks and I'm married to it, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's mm-hmm. so bizarre. Very bizarre. Yeah. Very, very bizarre. Um, and then you and I talked about uh, essentially the theories of um, El Duches. Right. Um, him being offered $50,000 and he turned it down to basically kill Cobain. Right. He basically saying to people and then, you know, essentially... Um, died after he made it public. Um, and then, so I wanted to play some audio. Um, I don't know if uh, you want to hear. Yeah. Um, so this is the recording of uh, the BBC documentary um, where they talk to him and he essentially says, you know, they're, they're, to paint the story is it's the BBC correspondent comes in with this guy who's a friend who told him, let me take you to the guy who says and has been claiming this, right? Right. And then he slips and says Alan Wrench's name. And Alan is the one who in another audio essentially says, yeah, there's sarcasm in his voice. Um, The sarcasm in his voice is literally, like I said in the last one, he gives me those Hermosa Beach bros type of vibes. Right. They're just assholes young, you know what I mean? Don't give a fuck, right? So I wanted to go ahead and play this. All right, there it is. This is Al Melduce. This is the... Yeah! 
Tell you, he's... Where's the booze? Sure, the dog won't get out and attack us here? This is dog angry dog. a perverted. He's just a perverted. Yep, a warped, uh, <laughs> intoxicated most of the time. So, and, but you, uh, you did some deal with Courtney, right? Yeah. Whoa. She offered me 50 grand to whack Kurt Cobain. Yeah, I was telling you. She what? 50 grand to whack Kurt Cobain. And that's, that's. That's a fact, is it? <laughs> but uh, people might think you're not the most reliable witness. Well, that's too bad. You may not be the reliable witness your own self. <laughs> now think about that one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when she offered me money, God dang, I wish I would have taken it, man. But I, I know who whacked him. But how were you going to whack him? Did she tell you how to do it? Yeah, blow his fucking head off. So she where were you going to find him to do it? Well, up there, and uh, she gave, you know, mapped it out. I mean, you know, up there in uh, Bellevue, wherever they live, right outside Seattle. I know right where the house is. I know right what, what uh, garden pop him in. Uh, I, just, I just didn't <laughs> think she was serious. But did she tell you how she wanted you yeah, to pop him? Yeah, she says, blow his fucking head off. I got the shotgun. But she didn't say anything about Make making it look, it look like, like a suicide. suicide. Well, yeah, but if you just blew his brains out, like you said, it wouldn't look like suicide. It looked like you blew his brains right. out, right? But uh, I told Alan, I mean, uh, my friend, who... <laughs> uh, I'll let the FBI catch him. But uh, <laughs> that's just the way it's done. End of story. <laughs> I got... <laughs> hey, 50 grand does a lot of talking. So that um, audio is of El Duque or El Duque. Wow, I that's, never know. Yeah, that's crazy. Yes. So, and apparently he also passed lie detector tests um, that what he was saying that he was offered money um, essentially was correct, I guess. Um so in this video, uh, this is the BBC, and I discussed it last time that, you know, again, the documentary was not published, but he was dead two days later. Oh, wow. He lived across the street from um, the, the railroad, and they found him there. And um, so... I don't know. If, so basically in that audio, he says, but I know who did it. It was Alan. Alan is Alan Wrench. Um, and so there's video, you know, we're going to play the audio, obviously, where he is being, this is Alan Wrench now. He is being, this is online as well. This is back then talking kind of very cocky about the fact that he took the money and very sarcastically um, and just, you know, kind of, um, very arrogant and so some people are like well is he implicating himself in here i mean it makes total sense right, right like right. to some so i'm gonna go ahead and play that now that's interesting why are we stuck on the 50 grand you tell me your studio's worth 50 grand ducci was offered 50 grand what's with the 50 grand uh, it's probably one of those uh you know numbers that just comes up a lot you know like when you play uh craps you know seven keeps coming up you know with rock you know 50 grand keeps coming up for some reason. The trick is, you know, as with killing people, don't get caught. No, oh, it's a nice little assassination. Yeah? Perfect assassination looks like suicide. Cops will do a suicide. But do you think it looked like suicide? Do you think it really added up to suicide? Because it seemed physically impossible for him to have put away his heroin kit and shot himself in the mouth with the amount of heroin was in the system. Uh, he had probably had a pretty high tolerance. Plus, you know, if you had him a little bit incapacitated just so his heart's pumping, you pump a little bit of heroin into him. It wouldn't be that big of a deal. But if his heart's pumping, isn't that going to send the heroin through the system a lot faster and actually kill him a lot faster? No, no I don't think so. As long as it's in there, that's all you need. Guy fucking shoots up, gets a little depressed, sticks a shotgun in his mouth. Hey. As long as the shotgun blast removes part of the neck so any kind of marks on his neck put on there by someone else, <laughs> as long as those are as long as those are erased, it looks like a nice little clean suicide. Well, Courtney Love's involved in his death. 
uh, I would have Either to. By s- assisted suicide or having them killed. Uh, I would have to say that uh, I have no comment on that. We'll have to. We'll have to see. We'll have to see what she says. Why don't we put Just it that an way? Opinion, brother. Hypothesis. There's no incriminating. My opinion. Slander. My opinion is that. Uh, She's a very talented and intelligent person mm-hmm. and probably would never say anything that would get her into trouble. That's what I would say about Courtney Love on the Cobain thing. Your personal take on uh, <laughs> the process of her career from the time he passed on to now. <sighs> well, Aided or hurt by the fact that Kurt died? Oh, helped all the way because she was going to get divorced. Right. He was kick- She already didn't live there. She wouldn't have got anything in the settlement. She wouldn't have got her movie career. And uh, actually, the money she has now isn't lasting that long anyway. So. so everything that you're saying right now points to the fact that she very likely could have been involved in his demise, and it would have benefited yeah. her greatly, as because if he would have lived and lasted a lot longer, she would. She would have been on the streets. Right yeah, she would have been out in front of. Uh, out in front of. Uh, she would have been playing the drums on the little. Yeah, rock she would have been playing. Yeah, she would have been playing, playing in the uh, rock, uh, probably like hitchhiking to get uh, to pick up on uh, Johns and yeah, and singing and tap dancing in front of a tin cup in front of the uh, guitars on a rock. Do you think she would have been in an Allen <laughs> Ranch concert throwing a bra at the stage? Uh, she'd probably be in my bedroom uh, sucking my huge American cock in the backseat of my big Lexus. Speaking of the possibly, Lexus, possibly. Speaking of the Lexus, where did the fifty grand come to just drop and just buy it outright? Oh, Courtney gave it to me for uh, blown away Cobain. Oh, oh, I can't believe I just <laughs> slipped up like that. Oh God. Oh, what I meant to say is, uh, from a uh, a business venture. Right. So that was Alan Wrench essentially saying, like, an ass, yeah, you know, I made fifty. The same number comes up, which is fifty thousand dollars. Right. That's crazy. The guy tells him, I keep hearing $50,000. And then at the end of that video, what he says is literally there are two things that he will not be, you know, um, charged ever for. It's the death of Kurt Cobain and the death of El Duque. Why would he say that, right? Huh. Wow. So at the end, I don't know if you guys caught that, he said that. Now, going back to the death of El Duque, right? We talked about the fact that he was found two days later. So the documentary was still being produced, right? So it wasn't like it was public or anything. So obviously word got back to someone and he died. So now Alan Wrench is saying after this, those are the two deaths I will never get tried for. Why would he say that? (laughs) Wow. You guys heard it. That's crazy. Now, uh, I'm going to play another uh, audio, and this is Fat Mike from NoFX, um, where he literally says, you know, they talk about the death of El Duque, and so he tells him, essentially, you know how they found his body, right? Apparently, his head was decapitated. I did not know this. And um, he mentions Courtney Love's name in the interview. I used to see them at the cafe. We, we spent some time with El Duque. You know how they found El Duce. Dead? Found him dead with no head. I did not know that. Yes. He found him on train tracks with his head on one side and his body on, on the other. Committed suicide? No, it's Courtney Love. And you are fat? <laughs> I'm Fat Mike. So you guys heard that. It was a little snippet of a long interview, um, but why would he implicate... Courtney, you know, and not only that, no one, he's essentially saying his head was found, he, you know, it, it was crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> I wonder if, he, if he's just saying that because that was the rumor back in the day that it's like fucking his head was completely off or if that's something, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. That's weird. Yeah. 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 So we also, the other things I was starting to kind of look into also was the fact that apparently Courtney Love was very close to several detectives that were in the police department at the time. Um, Apparently, um, some of them believe that they were in cahoots with her, um, especially like Dr. Nicola, who was her Dr. Nicholas Hartshorn was her personal friend and he was essentially the one who did the autopsy and it was quick closed. Yeah. And this is also documented um that they were very 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 close. 
Um, she would have them on speed dial, you know, um, I think there are pictures of them together in the eighties. Like they go way back. Oh, damn. Yes. Yes. And he was the one who was a medical examiner of his suicide. And remember in the last episode, we also discussed the fact that they didn't wait for toxicology, right? Right. They had already in the documentation had said and ruled that it was an autopsy. Um, apparently too, by the way, if they were reading some of the police first responders, their, their reports, it doesn't sound like it should have been seen as a suicide that quickly, but someone got there, overrode everything. Right. Right. And this doctor is Antonio Terry. He was the one who started to plant the, it looks like, a. Uh, suicide right away right. he was also murdered um in a car oh um, damn. yeah now i'm not saying that there's any it could be total coincidence but some people find it very weird that people all around this circle were killed or died of overdoses that's crazy Let me are ask we you stretching this. no but no 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 let me ask you this though <laughs> you're a healthcare professional how yeah. many uh, postmortem uh, medical examiners are you partying with on a regular basis? Me, none. Yeah. Okay, none. I used to yeah. work in one of the biggest university university uh, medical schools, you know, campuses, and I never knew one. And I was surrounded mm -hmm. by doctors all day and night, you know. Mm -hmm. So, isn't it strange that a pill popping drug addict rock star is hanging out with a medical examiner? Mm -hmm. Super yeah. fishy. Yeah. And not only that, we also talked about her lawyer, right? Who was talking to the private eye after, and she was adamant that he did not commit suicide, right? right? Um, I also found out in audios that she had was that, remember we talked about in her backpack that she left at her office? She had um, essentially, Courtney Love had like letters of trying to handwrite certain letters right? that kind of seemed to match the two lines of his suicide note but there was also a note that as i did more in these audio tapes she said one of them was get arrested so apparently if you look back she was arrested for like drug possession uh the day before they found his body right as so people she was insinuating that she was trying to do this is her fucking personal lawyer insinuating that she was trying to have an alibi. Oh, damn. So I went and sure enough, she was arrested, but then released because there was no, she made a scene apparently. And so they had probable cause to arrest her, Courtney Love. Right. So I didn't know any of this. Like, I swear to God, there needs to be some Netflix documentary looking into this shit. Right. <laughs> and putting you know, all this stuff together. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Total conspiracy theory potentially could be true. I don't know. I'm just fascinated with this because it's been, I mean, we always do the math wrong. It's, it was what, when did he, when did he die? 94, right? Was it? Yeah. So Let's not even try. It's been a while. <laughs> so let's say 2004, 2014, that's 20 years to six. That's 26 years he died, right? 26 years ago. Um, now from that, timeline till now it, the fan base of nirvana was huge right and he, they influenced so many people i mean one of these people who were who was a big fan of cobain i'm sure grew up to be some kind of law enforcement investigator pi something right or lawyer or something that you would think would have the interest to want to reopen this case like make it like a legit documentary like document, like talk to experts, talk, you know what I'm saying? Like somebody has got to be doing something, right? Cause it's like, how is this just swept under the rug over and over, you know? Mm -hmm. Honestly. And you know, there are like, I think the form, one of the former chiefs said that he felt they should reopen this. Um, but he's retired. Um, the, the, to me, there seems like a lot, like, you know, the guy who is her close best friend, personal friend right right was the one who did the med that to me is unethical you know what i mean yeah yeah that right there is unethical yeah 
So, but I truly believe, like I told you in the last episode, I believe that they're just trying to put it away and deal with, you know, like that was decades ago. That's right. what I think. But from what I'm reading, like I had no idea that Dr. Nicholas Hart, Hart Shorn was her close BFF. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He was in the business of promoting punk rock groups in the 80s and happened to book Nirvana in 1988. Now tell me, he booked Nirvana. Why is he doing a fucking autopsy? Yeah. This is very unethical in my, in, if you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> so again, I had no idea about any of this shit and all this shit is public, guys. Public record. How That's the so fuck? Crazy. Yes. There, and there's a lot of documentaries, but I think there needs to be, you know, kind of like some big shot to be like, let's just do this. Even if it's just for entertainment, all this information is entertainment, right? Right. A big company picks it up. I guarantee you they will look into this. Yep. Because right now, honestly, I think the department is just trying to like, let's move on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Because it sounds like there's a lot of people and they uh, also a police a spokesperson for the police department says that they get at least one request a day from someone to reopen the case to this day. That's crazy. That's a lot. At least one a day. That's yeah. a lot. But they won't open it. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. I think I think there. you know, we we did a whole the free Britney movement. Right. There's a lot going on there now. And there's a, I mean, what I'm getting at is I think there has to be some form of movement. I'm not, it's not like free Kurt Cobain. No, no, no. There has to be some media or not media, some Twitter traction. Right. For, I think them to give a shit. But right now, cause they, they were interviewed and they said, we get at least one request a day, That's but crazy. it's not enough for them to open it. <laughs> you know, the, the one thing that, that, uh, I was surprised by it was remember the crime scene photos that were never, the rolls of film that were never developed processed mm -hmm. apparently they were processed right a few years ago uh like, yes like pretty recently so it's like okay now the photos are processed the prints were made the photo prints the four by six print whatever okay so who's seen those prints they're private yeah like like you know what i'm saying like somebody has the access to them somebody's seen them and i want to know what 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 is in there what you know com comparing it to the report of how the body was found the position the the personal possessions around the drug paraphernalia the shotgun uh position all that stuff i want to know does the pit do the pictures show that you know that's mm -hmm. that's i mean if the pictures show that then somebody's gonna be like fucking open up this case right now you know it's like because otherwise you know we've all been lied to you know mm -hmm. or you know it was a cover-up you know probably mm -hmm. yeah so that's the thing. So where where do we stand now as far as why a lot of people, we talked about, you know, him wanting to divorce her, the lawyer, and, you know, saying, you know, he didn't kill himself. And all these are audio tapes, right? Um, these other people saying that they were offered money, you know, it's just a lot of crazy stuff. Right. Um, but if we look at just the police department, apparently there was lack of blood at the scene. So people found that very odd, right? Yeah. Um, uh, it showed also, uh, and, and when we say uh, lack of blood, it was if he w did commit suicide, the splatter would be different and there would be, so that's where the lack they suspect. So maybe now, you know, forensically it, it wouldn't, they wouldn't have ruled it a suicide right away, right? Right. Toxicology report uh, determined that his heroin level was at 1.52 milligrams per liter, which is like, four, like ridiculous. Like he would have been dead the moment he injected himself. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how would he have shot himself? And you know, like I said in the last episode, if you guys check out the gun, it's rifle, it's huge. It's probably five feet two inches like no, i'm just kidding <laughs> that's how tall i am but yeah, it's as big as mary it's it's huge right yeah. um the other thing and again it was he was too he sh he would have been in incapacitated to where he could shoot himself because apparently i've never done it but if you do it right away it hits you quick right um the other thing we talked about the suicide note right 
Um, but the other thing is that they were talking about that they did not check that this is the police department did not check for fingerprints on the shotgun. He died in April. They didn't check any for any fingerprints until May 6th, a month after Cobain's body was discovered. Wow. They were able to take out four cards of like latent prints but they were not legible. Did they purposely wait 30 days? I mean, yeah, sounds that's, like it. That's suspicious. Not legible to me says something was wiped. So why the hell, but why, but why the hell did they wait so long? Right. Shouldn't they be doing that on the scene? You see what I'm saying? Not, not only that, but then the, the rifle, the shotgun was returned to Courtney Love. Was it? Yeah. And then apparently she had it melted down. Hmm. So it's like now the gun's gone a hundred percent completely. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah. Along with the house being, um, that room being demolished or whatever. So a lot of things like she just conveniently took care of immediately, which was, um, cream, cremating the body, right? Mm -hmm. The, the melting down the gun supposedly, and then demolishing that room, the attic, whatever that room was. And I'm like, wow, how convenient. Like, you would think the police detectives would have been like, ma'am, don't go anywhere. This stays in our possession. This, do, do not enter. Like, they would tape it off and leave it, do not enter for a month or weeks or however long it takes to do a full investigation. But it's like, everything moves so quickly. And it was like an open and shut case. And we're like, yeah, suicide, suicide, done, done, dead. He's dead, done, done, done. And it's like... Mm -hmm. Wow, so convenient. Yeah. But, you know, I did see a lot of interviews with Kurt Cobain, and he does come off as being kind of depressive. Right. Um, he talks about death openly, right? Um, so a lot of friends and family did say that he did have a lot of instabil mental instability and depression. Right. They believe he probably was an, had an undiagnosed bipolar disorder, and his actual bandmates... You know, David Grohl and Chris actually believe that he did commit suicide. They know him better than any of us, right? right. So we're speculating, you know. Right. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of information that makes it seem that way. But there's also, you know, if you go back and listen to some of his, um, you know, interviews, he comes off as very depressive. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I and that I can't argue with, you know. Um, when he did the MTV Unplugged, uh, they covered a few songs and a lot of them had talked about death. Oh, you yeah, know? definitely. So, yeah, so part of me is like, well, then maybe he did commit suicide, right? I don't know. You know, so as the more I started to look into this. Yeah. Um, I remember I remember that performance because they covered uh, the Meat Puppets' uh, Lake of Fire. And, of course, you know, it was Lake of Fire, you know, where, where you go to die, right? It's, you know, and it says... Wow, speaking of death, you know, but mm -hmm. he seems so. There's like you could find this footage on on online on YouTube where you see the in between, because you know mm -hmm. they recorded for um, M MTV Unplugged, right? But there's commercial mm -hmm. breaks or whatever, and mm -hmm. during the commercial breaks, he's just joking around, like having the time of his life. But he's a little out of it, you know. He's like, "Am I in tune? Like, does this sound in tune? Like, do you mean Lugie talk? You know?" But still, he seemed happier, you know, than usual, you know. Mm -hmm. might, that might have been the happiest he probably ever was, you know, he ever was. But but he, that performance was so good. Like, he was on his game that day, you know? Yeah. And then yeah. probably went back to being depressed or, like you said, bipolar or something, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And apparently, the more I looked into his life, he didn't do very well. He felt um, abandoned by his mother. Right. Um, his dad was an ass as well with him. You know, he, he just had a dysfunctional family. Yeah. Um, and so he apparently was bullied as well, you know, and, and, you know, finally was kind of like drawn to music. Right. Um, so definitely it, it's possibility that maybe he did, I don't know. But to me, based on everything else that we've talked about, it, it's hard for me to believe that, um, 
The other thing, uh, now this is not a conspiracy, but um, I w had mentioned to you, Leone, that I had seen the acceptance speech of Nirvana, the living members, um, to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, right, right. And I essentially, you know, I was like, well, I want to listen to this. You know, they all went on stage and so did Cobain's family and Courtney was there. Um, they all gave a little message. And then when Courtney went up, you guys look it up. It sounds like the crowd, not not the celebrities, right? It sounds like the crowd that's there all the way in the back. It sounds like she's being booed. <laughs> that's funny. So I was like, whoa, 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 are they booing her? And, you know, they cut to celebrities, you know, and they, they're not booing her. It's It sounds like whatever crowd was in the back was booing her. Right. So I was like, oof, that's embarrassing. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I think... Um, for his daughter, you know, it must suck to have never, I mean, she obviously met him, but she was months old, you right. know, or like two years old when he died Yeah. to have this haunt her, you know, and, you know, I just hope that she's made peace with it in her own way. Um, and I don't think we'll ever get to the bottom of this, but unless someone with a lot of money makes a good ass documentary with all these theories and it goes mainstream right maybe maybe but i don't think it's gonna go anywhere god so crazy so crazy yeah so this will be the last episode um on the kurt cobain but i just wanted to kind of put some audios out there and a few tidbits that i kind of discovered but again if you know anyone who's dealing with depression you know please you know, there are hotlines you can reach out to, yes. you know, people are, are always there, to, you know, you're not alone um, because it's, it's uh, real to be down. I mean, yeah. I've been down sometimes, you know, when yeah. life hits us hard and it sucks, but we're not alone. Um, so, yeah. And if you guys um, need it, we're all here for you. Yep. All right. Well, thank you, Leone. Can we do it again? Absolutely. Yeah. I promise I won't have a crazy story next time. <laughs> then you're no fun. Come back <laughs> to the crazy story. I want a um, halloween -y story, so you got you to gotta go work on one. A Halloween story? Oh, Lord. halloween well, story. halloween -y. Yeah. That's the girls call it. it. Call what? You know, the, the, the girls that dress up in the sexy costumes, they call it halloween -y. Really? I've never heard of that. Oh, just go online, look for the sexy costumes, look for the hashtag Halloweeny. It, it's a trend. Oh, <laughs> it's a thing, God, Mary. I'm it's so a thing. naive. You're so square. Oh, my God. I'm so naive, guys. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's funny. I'm going to look it up. So, And um, for everyone else, have a safe and fun Halloween with whatever it is you're going to do. Yeah, happy and Halloween. I hope if you, yes, happy Halloween. And Best if you do dress up, witches. I hope you have, yes. So I hope you guys have great outfits, even if it's just you and your loved ones. <laughs> yes. Don't let COVID win. Nope. Not this year. Not this year. So bye everyone. That was episode 35 of the Purposely Curious Podcast. Make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on most podcast platforms. And follow us on social media at Purposely Curious on Instagram and at Purposely C Pod on Twitter. That's Purposely the letter C Pod. Until next time, you know what to do.